Hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, playfastfootball.blogspot.com. Sorry it's been so long since uh, since our last video on our last blog, but going through the spring in a new school and kind of forgot how hard it was to uh, to start a program or take over program again. I uh, had been at the same school for 15 years previously, and you kind of get spoiled sometimes when you have your off season and everybody and coaches and players and everybody knows what's going on and they know what to expect. and you change jobs and take over a new school and you kind of forget how hard a lot of that stuff is scheduling your off-season program in the summer and then trying to you know schedule some camps and some other things and so uh, just been real busy getting through the uh, getting through spring football in May and then getting through uh, our workouts in June but uh, ready to crank this thing up again and get rolling we're going to talk today about uh, access throws or free throws on the back side of the run game and uh, for me I grew up as an X receiver or split end receiver in a predominantly 21 personnel offense. And what that meant is on the backside of run plays, I would always, you know, be responsible for deep man middle of the field or the cutoff man, you know, working towards the middle of the field free safety. And, you know, a lot of times you would do, you would do drills to work cutting off that guy and the angles you had to take and how hard you had to work to get there and where the football was going to be and try and assume you know, where the free safety is going to be to make a play, not where he's lined up. And, you know, throughout the course of a season, you may only get there three to four times. And those three or four times that you get there, they're probably going to be big blocks for big plays. But, you know, if the ball is run away from you 100 to 150 times and you only get there three times, you know, percentage-wise, that's really not a great percentage for what we're doing on the backside. Um, so, you know, as, as we started diving more into the up-tempo stuff, we started, you know, studying how teams were packaging a lot of plays together, but, you know, also how they were able to call plays so fast and keep themselves out of bad situations. Because one thing you realize as an up-tempo coach, when you're trying to call plays, you know, relatively quickly, you're using a lot of your film study and a lot of your tendencies and a lot of what you know about the, the team you're playing, but there's really no way in 15 seconds to call a play and know what the defense is going to be in. And one thing that I learned from studying a lot of the, the really, really good up-tempo teams in college is they are in a lot of second and 12, second and 14, second and 15 situations. And they lose some first downs every once in a while, but they stay true to who they are and they stay up-tempo. And, you know, they're, they're gambling on the fact that their good plays are going to rip you more than their bad plays are going to hurt them and, and they try not to turn the ball over but they know that they're not always going to be you know in second and six second and five obviously when they're playing well and they're calling their plays right and, and their packages are correct and they're in a lot of good situations but there's going to be times where you watch those teams in second and 12 or second and 14 and for the most part a lot of them don't care they just call their next play even quicker but when you get a chance to talk to some of those coaches and really study what they do i think what you find is a lot of times they are giving their quarterback a way out of bad plays. And in the old days, the quarterback used to be responsible for, for getting you in and out of bad plays and, and being an audible type system where the quarterback would have to make checks at the line of scrimmage based on defensive fronts, defensive coverages. And, you know, you had maybe you had hot colors and dead colors or whatever your system was. I know for me as a college player, we would every week we would have a hot color and the hot color meant that a quarterback was changing the play, but all the dead colors meant that, that it was just a dummy signal and we were staying with the play we called in the huddle. You know, and that was a lot of pressure put on quarterbacks, and the quarterbacks had to be on top of their game and really had to study. And uh, what we found out, or at least what I found as a high school coach, I know the amount of film that I'm going to watch on my opponent. I know how much I'm going to study. I really can't guarantee how much time my, my quarterback or my 15-year-old quarterback is going to put in. Hopefully, if I've, if I've chosen the right quarterback, he's going to put a lot of time in. But I don't think he's ever going to put more time in than the head coach or the offensive coordinator. So I want to be in charge of calling the plays. And I really don't want that 15-year-old quarterback putting me into or out of good or bad plays. So as an up-tempo team, what you try and do is you try and run a lot more packages where your quarterback's going to have a chance to read things on the fly to put you in and out of good situations. And... One of the things that I studied the last two years, and, and we're going to implement it uh, this season at, at my new school, is, is giving the quarterback throws on the backside of runs. Keeping the wide receivers on the backside of runs excited because there's a potential to get the ball. Not making them deep man, middle of the field cutoff players. Um, making them options in the run game as well because they now are running routes on the backside and, and based on 
the looks that the defense has given us, the quarterback may be able to abort the front side run and just take a free or an access throw on the back side. And again, studying a lot of the up-tempo teams, this is something that they do not only to get them in and out of bad plays, but it's something that they do so that they can call plays really, really quickly and not be stuck always into one play. If you're going to call plays every 15 seconds, it's very hard to just call a certain play that has to go a certain direction and live with that play because, you know, if the defense overloads that side or if the defense has a blitz call to that side, you're probably going to end up with a bad play. So what you find more and more when you study up-tempo teams is a lot of their stuff is packaged to where the quarterback can read certain things to get them out of certain plays. And I think this theory of access throws or free throws on the backside of runs is something that allows them to, you know, for our... For, for a good example, two or three years ago when Ole Miss was in a bowl game, I think it was Coach Freeze's first year, they had, a, they had a scoring drive in a game where they ran five plays down the field and they scored and four different people touched the ball. And when you looked at the play, you thought, you know, at, at, at game speed, you thought maybe they were calling some different things at the line of scrimmage, but they really ran the same play, all right? They ran a, a zone read option on the front side with a built-in access throw on the back side. And what ended up happening was, you know, the first time they ran the play, the quarterback kept it. Second time they ran it, he gave it. Third time they ran it, he threw the bubble. And then the fourth time he ran it, I think he threw the, an access throw to the backside X receiver, and they ended up scoring a 20-yard touchdown. And it was the same play called four times in a row. And when I watched that, it really opened up my mind um, to, you know, being able to maybe not have to have 55 play calls. You know, if you can run a certain play, and run it perfectly, and it has reads and options built in, well then maybe you don't need as many play calls, maybe you just need to get better at the things you're running. Okay, so what we're going to talk about today is, is building access or free throws into the backside of runs. And what I got drawn up right now is just our standard 2x2 two two front side veer with a key screen, alright, and then I've got some access routes built in on the backside. Now, you know, last year, and, and I want to say in the old days, but even recently as, as, as closest last year and the year before and you know the year before we had a very good offensive season our backside two players on runs would be cutoff players and they were trying to be they would be trying to cut off a linebacker and cut off a deep man middle of the field and we never used them in the run game we lived with the run that we called on the front side and a lot of our runs were reads or option plays but still you don't want to you know you don't want to live in that world all the time as a tempo team and if that run isn't there and you called it you're stuck with a bad play so what we decided to do this season all right, and after studying a little bit more, is we decided to build in access throws on the backside. And what that means is it's going to be quick game throws. They're not part of the front side read. So we're not reading somebody to throw a bubble screen on the backside. We're not leveraging a defender on the backside. So it's not zone right with a bubble screen left like traditional, you know, zone bubble or zone read theory. It's actually front side veer with key screens out here. So the front side of this play is my right over here is the front side play side. And now what we've done is we've taken the back side and we've used access throws that, that the receiver, receivers can run, excuse me, based on coverage, all right? We put some access throws in that the quarterback at any time can choose to just take one of those access throws on the back side if he likes to throw or if he doesn't like what maybe the defense is giving him on the front side, okay? Now, the only thing the quarterback has to understand is if we are in a read game, and we are leaving a player unblocked. If he is going to take a free throw on the backside, he must tell the tailback behind him that he's taking that throw and that tailback has to block the read player. Because for argument's sake, like right here, okay, we're leaving this end unblocked. All right? If, if everybody goes about their business and just runs the play, we can bank on the fact that the quarterback is just going to beat the end with a quick throw to the outside. Or we can take the tailback, let him know that we're taking the free throw to the backside, and make the tailback now go block the read player. And it would end up looking almost like a three-step protection in a way. We're not going to tell the offensive line or the front side screen players. Those seven guys, we're not going to tell anything. We're going to let them run the run play. The offensive line is going to run block it, and we're going to get the ball off quick enough so that they're not too far downfield. Okay? And the front side guys are, under, are going to run the screen game. All right? They don't even need to know that the quarterback is doing anything different. All right, so what we've got built in on the back side is we've got maybe an out cut on the outside and a hitch cut on the inside versus off coverage. And if we got any press coverage, these would turn into takeoff routes. Okay, so 
What we're saying on the backside now is let's say maybe they're a team that doesn't apex that linebacker out far enough and they play more of a two read or a quarter shell, maybe seven off and ten off of one and two, but they don't want to walk out that linebacker and he doesn't want to honor that number two receiver. Okay. Well, instead of just having to come out and constantly call plays over here, we can call runs to the front side that we like, and depending on how they line up, okay, if that will linebacker wants to stay in tight and they want to give us a free throw to the backside, the quarterback can now take that throw based on the look. Okay. So it's given us the ability to have play side runs called with the quarterback having the ability to build in throws to the backside automatically based on coverage. Okay. And you're going to get some teams... You know, and, and it, it may depend on where the ball is on the field. It may depend on down and distance. But you're going to get some teams where this Willie's going to, sometimes he's going to be apexed out here. Sometimes he's going to be walk tighter in a box. All right? And if you constantly call plays thinking where that Will's going to line up and he lines up somewhere different, now you've got a quick game called out here that you don't like because of where the Will is. Now you've got a run game call, but the Will is, is in the box taking away the run. Whatever the case may be, now you've got on the back side of your runs, you've got a chance to build some things in, all right, to where your quarterback now has a chance to get you out of bad plays, but also maybe take advantage of some structural weaknesses of the defense, okay? Maybe you catch a team that's running zero, and they're playing press man over here on this side, and you've got a run called into it, okay? Well, if it's zero, and you've got a run called into it, if you block it right and execute it, and the quarterback's involved in the run, Sometimes against zero, you can get big runs. But also in zero, when they're sending guys a lot and they're moving D linemen, maybe they're sending six, you get a lot of busts and you run into a lot of bad plays. And that's where, especially in the read game, you can get bad exchanges, fumbles, turnovers. So sometimes you can get yourself out of that run play, all right, if you get pressed man on the backside, all right, zero coverage, and you think a blitz is coming, your quarterback may be able to get you out of that by just having the tailback block the edge. All right, we're going to gap down the run, so it would be blocked almost like a quick protection anyways, and we take a quick outside vertical or a takeoff to a matchup that we like on the outside. All right, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to build in ways that we can use our receivers on the backside, keep them in the game, get them the football, without just having to call a bubble screen out there all the time. You know, I mean, you're going to get out guessed sometimes. A lot of times you come out as a coach and you say, all right, let's get the bubble to number two. They're not walking out. And that team comes down and they play some type of man-to-man -man or cover two or something that takes away the bubble, and now you're on the sideline going, shoot, I've got bubble called into a squat corner, we're going to get killed. Okay? Now you can call front side runs and have some throws executed on the back side. All right? And what ends up happening is this play now has a lot of different choices. We can stay front side veer and maybe give to the tailback. We can stay front side veer and we can pull. After we pull, we can either keep with the QB or we can throw the bubble screen. Or we can throw an access throw on the backside that can be anything from a hitch to an out to a takeoff. Okay? Some guys like to build in slants on the backside. All right? Some guys like to throw slants as their, as their access, and that's fine. It's all a matter of, of a coach. All right? Maybe you've got that built in, and you're going to read you know, what, what that will linebacker is doing, and the quarterback can read where the will is in the box and maybe access some of those slant throws. It's all a matter of what you're comfortable doing as a coach. Okay? But... The main theory here is trying to be up-tempo, trying to call plays every 14 to 16 seconds while giving the quarterback an opportunity to get you out of some bad plays. And at the same time, let's keep excited guys, guys that we want to be excited that are playmakers, let's keep them excited with a chance to get the ball. Okay? You know, we all try to preach to our players that they got to play hard every play, they got to play every down. Well, even if you watch the NFL or college games, you'll be hard-pressed to find a receiver on the backside of runs that plays hard every down. Okay? All right, there, there's some of them that do, and, and coaches, we're trying to say that we're not going to allow guys to loaf and we're not going to tolerate that. But, you know, reality is reality. We have to understand that throughout the course of an 80-snap high school game, you may have a guy on the backside that takes some plays off. Well, I guarantee you, as a former receiver myself, if the backside guys are running routes, they will not take plays off because anytime they run a route, they think they have a chance to get the football. And if you explain it as such to them and let them know that every time they run a route, they have a chance to get the football, probably going to get a good chance that they won't take plays off. Now the front side guys, you know, sometimes they might have to block, all right? So you might have, for instance, we might have, you know, maybe we've got power called, all right? Maybe we're going to run power read front side, and we're going to build in an access throw on the back side. So maybe we're two back here, okay? And 
let's say you know we're we're two back twenty one person twenty personnel, and for argument's sake we're going to run standard power, but we're going to read it. All right, so you know we get to a point where. You know, we're going to run the standard power play. We're going to block power here. All right, so we're going to double this and try and go back. We're going to block back on this. We're going to skip pull and try and get wrapped on the mic. We're going to hinge that B gap there. We're going to arc release for the mic. All right, we're going to send the tailback straight across. We're going to read this defensive end here. But now we've got to physically block that overhang. So now on the front side, these receivers physically have to block. All right, on the back side now, we can build in whatever we want. Maybe we build in slant to take off on the back side, okay? The front side receivers are going to have to block. You, there's no way to keep them excited for an access throw on the front side, all right? Because we've got power read call. We're going to have to block this overhang, block that corner. We can't really, you know, say that we're going to keep every receiver excited on the field at the same time. No, that's not what I'm telling you. But on the back side, I can keep this X involved. When in traditionally in old school football, this X would have been a guy that's hauling tail across the field to try and cut off somebody in the deep middle of the field because we had the power play call. Well, now on the back says he's built into an access throw, and in his mind, he thinks there's a chance he's getting the football. So he's either running the slant or the takeoff, or you know, you can even build in the outcut. All right, whatever it may be that you've got built in, you've got your X now ready to play hard because he thinks he might get the football. All right, and now as an up-tempo team, what you've got is you've got all right a system where now your quarterback, for whatever reason, if you get you know sometimes if you run the ball well enough, you may get a you may get a loaded four-three box, okay, where you may get a loaded box with a strong safety and maybe one high back here, and now on the backside there might not be an overhang. They may tell you, hey, you're not going to run the football on us. We're going to keep seven in the box. All right, we're going to try and win with numbers. We're going to keep an overhang down over the slot. And now they give you one-on-one -on -one matchups back here. Okay. Well, instead of having to always call the right play to that matchup, you can have a run play called. Okay. And now you can have an access throw on the backside. And what that does for you is maybe this team is in a one play. You call a run play, and they're in a four, a heavy four-three look. All right. And you know your quarterback has to come back, and he's got to choose the access throw. And then maybe next time that you call that run play, they go to too high. All right, they go to too high maybe, and now they only have six in the box, and you like your numbers, and off the same play versus a different shell or a different look, now maybe your quarterback likes staying with the front side run versus the numbers. So now we've called the same play versus two distinctly different defenses, and the quarterback has options and the ability to do what he feels is right to put the offense in a good situation. Okay, we've kept an X receiver on the backside. All right, kind of happy and involved that he might be in the game. And then again, these guys are going to be on the backside of runs eventually, so they're going to have their chance to catch access throws or free throws on the backside. So what we're doing is we're trying to build ways to play fast, be up-tempo, stay out of bad place, okay, put some onus on the quarterback to get us in and out of good place, but also keep our skilled players happy so that every run has a built-in throw on the backside. Again, if you were going to take this throw now, I would have the quarterback... Tell this tailback, hey, I'm taking this throw. I need you to block this defensive end right now. Because the end was the guy that you left unblocked. Okay? I, we learned this the hard way. I learned this the hard way myself. Okay? We ran in the spring game. We ran stick draw with an access throw on the back side. All right? So what we did was we ran three by one stick draw on the front side. Okay? Now... As a coach, it's very important that you understand, you, you may not have all the answers all the time, but you better learn when you do make a mistake. That's one thing I can pride myself on. I've been beat by a lot of stuff, all right? I've been beat by a lot of different great, uh, you know, good coaches, probably some bad coaches, but I'm not going to get beat twice by the same thing. So the first time I make that mistake, you know, if you take advantage of it, and this team we played did, all right, but I won't make it again. And this was my fault. This was totally on me. We ran stick draw, all right, versus a team that likes to leave six in the box, all right, and they like to cover everybody up man-to-man -man here, okay? They like to leave six in the box, cover the trips up man-to-man. -man. Well, in the stick draw theory, all right, you're running stick or the hitch here, you're running vertical there, you're running back out, you're trying to read off the Mike linebacker, okay? When you have six in the box, 
and the number three is covered, there is no read to make on the Mike linebacker. All right? The Mike linebacker doesn't have to leave to cover three. All right? And if the Mike linebacker stays, you don't have an easy throw to make the three. So it's not the greatest scenario for stick draw. And a lot of teams, if you ask a lot of good teams, and I had a real, real good Division I team come in and tell me that they started playing a ton of man free so that they can defend the stick draw. Okay? So man free zero against stick draw doesn't put you in a lot of good situations on offense. What it makes you do is it makes you come back here and try and win to the solo side. Okay? Or if you were to get press you might be able to win out here, but it takes the stick draw option out. Okay? It takes the stick draw option out. You're going to have to win a one-on-one -on -one somewhere. So what happened to us was we had it based up where we were going to read the mic. Okay? And our tailback sets away from the stick and he gets ready to run draw if the quarterback presents him with the ball. Okay? Quarterback comes out, sees six in the box, he sees everybody covered on the front side. Quarterback decides that he's going to take the access free throw, and it happened to be off coverage to the single, and we were going to run the hitch cut. Okay? Well, what we didn't account for was the Mike linebacker blitzing through the A gap. Okay? And what happened was the Mike linebacker came through the A gap, hit the quarterback as he released it, and this defensive end picked the pass off as the ball went in the air. Okay? Because as an access throw or a free throw team, I should have told the tailback and the quarterback, if the quarterback takes the free throw, we need to block the read player, all right, in that in in that theory. Okay? And we worked on it in our screen, in our in our veer game, but we didn't work on it in the stick draw. And I forgot to tell the quarterback that if he takes the access throw, that the tailback needs to block the mic because that's who's unblocked on that play. Sure enough in the spring game, the mic blitz, hit the quarterback and we turn the ball over. Okay? So sometimes you've got to be able to learn from your mistakes and understand that you better not make that mistake again because, number one, we turned it over. Number two, I could have lost a starting quarterback because that Mike Linebacker was a darn good player and he was in there untouched. All right? So that's a lesson that I learned in access throws that I need to communicate to the quarterback, make sure he understands who the unblocked player is, and if he's going to take the free throw, put the tail back on the unblocked player in protection. Okay? So there's always something you can learn, and you always got to make sure you take advantage of, of, of mistakes or any opportunities that are out there. I took advantage of this one, didn't get the result in the spring game or the play that I wanted, so I learn and I build from it. That's what we're doing as coaches. We're trying to learn and move forward. Okay? So again, your access throws all right, are free throws on the backside of runs. You're trying to be able to play up tempo. You're trying to give your quarterback some choices, and you're trying to keep receivers happy. Okay? I hope this helps you out. Hopefully you can use it, and, and hopefully it works out for you. As always, guys, I'll catch you next time.